to? Uh, okay, guys, ready? So, essentially, what we're going to be doing is keep working with the uh, Taylor polynomials. That's our last day with Taylor polynomials, aren't you said? Um, and then we're going to have some more new stuff coming up in the following uh, couple of weeks. Okay, so some more applications of the error. We haven't really worked it too much with the error. And uh, the other day, uh, we had this problem with uh, the pendulum. So remember, we had this differential equation. And uh, anybody who can uh, wrap it up, uh, what was the issue? Anybody who could wrap up the problem from Wednesday? Just summarize it. It has to be near zero. Can we, for the cameras, yeah, anybody, Emilia, do you want to just wrap it up? Summarize it. Uh, no, no, Emilia, sorry, uh, Roman. Oh, um, well, we pretty much said that we couldn't really figure it out because it, we would only be able to solve it close to zero. So that's close to zero. What's the problem, though? What is the issue that we're trying to solve? we do have some differential equations from physics and they model what? They model this thing, the, remember the, the pendulum? I'm supposed to wear this. Anyway, so the pendulum and if the oscillations, as uh, Jessica is pointing out, you don't want the angle of the oscillation to be too big. Okay, but if it's small enough, then we talked about how we can actually take a sign of theta and safely replace it with theta, which is a much big improvement. So pick a number. One, two, three, two. Okay, good. Good, <laughs> two? Over here. Yeah. Seven. Where's seven? There. Okay, and uh, why does it work? Why can we say that near zero, near theta equals to zero, which is the angle, again, of the oscillation, then sine of theta is equal or approximately equal to theta? Let's just say that the length is equal to one. It doesn't matter. Four. What is four?
Two of which? X to the two n plus one. Oh, oh, they, yeah, there we go. Sorry. So theta two to two n plus one, and then all over two n plus one. Okay, very good. So how did you find it out? You looked up what you know and said, that's what I did over here myself. That's uh, uh, my cheat sheet I had from college. <coughs> anyway, so you just look it up, and I'm going to give you these formulas for the test. So sine, cosine, and e to the x. And we know how to actually get them. So based on that formula, I'm going to just use a couple of approximations, just a couple of terms. So particularly, I'm going to say sine of theta can be approximated by, what's the first term in this series? When n is equal to zero. 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 When n is equal to zero. Just think about it, talk to your neighbor. What's the first term in that series? Theta. Yeah, exactly. So if I put an n equals to zero over here, I'm getting theta to the power of one. Okay, so that saves it. Theta. And then I've got it, another bunch of terms over there. What's the next one? It's got a negative, and then I've got theta to the power three. So remember, that was the, the one with the odd uh, terms. And so then it, it keeps going, and then it keeps alternating plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus. OK, perfect. So we can say that theta is approximately theta. Sorry, sorry, sign of theta is approximately equal to theta. And what about the remainder? So what I want you guys to work on is get a estimate for the remainder. I want to know how big an error I'm making if uh, I am just stopping over here. And that was just uh, what we have. The, the Lagrange uh, error bound is the kind of um, tool that we're going to be using. OK, so work on this, and then all of the problems that follow that are similar, just uh, looking for errors and bounding those errors. Make sure that each team has a captain, so the captain is going to be responsible for you know, coming up with a, a uniform solution. Yeah, well, I so get a captain. I don't really know if it's a nice power or a power. Is it bad? It's been a fail. I would be reading it. So then you need to talk to me. I don't know. Yeah, please. Do we even have to read it? I have to read it every time on you. It's something that you skip. It skips you and even in art, right? Like you only have, you skip you only have one time. Right? I mean, it's two and four, that's only one time. Oh, yeah. That's how you figure you're looking at. I don't know how to do it. Oh, no, it's the potato. Yeah, it's the potato. Yeah, it's the potato. I don't even understand what we're going to discuss with you. Oh, right here we have the first call. Oh, the first call. Oh, the first I'm not sure what you were. The degree. What is it? Yeah. This is what it's like to have a five. So, since we did one, it should just be double. Like, I don't know. So get the uh, so so error, and then we'll go to the oh, next uh, question. Yeah. Yeah. So that wasn't really useful. Yeah. 
And it doesn't matter because the absolute value. I think you should put it in the right here. you have to find the radius.
Okay, so yeah, let's pick a the polynomial. Theta is just a T2. Mm -hmm. So there will be like a T3. So, so X squared over 2 factorial so we're looking for the fourth uh, the fourth uh, uh, derivative but the important thing is that they have they have different meaning the end of the year and the end of the year and the end of the year yeah. Okay, so how is it going over here? Oh my gosh, okay. So, tell me what you got. Okay, so how about we get started with another one? Let's uh, do D number six. Yeah, I guess that's what we're doing over here is just saying um, that sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. And we can see that because if we take the cubic expansion of sine of theta, it's over there. It's like theta minus theta cubed divided by the factorial and so forth. So we want to kind of estimate the error that we are making using this formula up here. If you get too stuck, move on, guys, OK? So try to cover all of the exercises that we have for today. So, and I killed all of the chatting. So the thing is that uh, if I stop at beta, that is just a first order polynomial. And so what I would be interested in is the second order polynomial, which is not there because beta is also the second polynomial. Oh, well, we did that. Side of theta. We don't have we did that. Part. We did that. Part. So essentially, we have a T2. And so I'm interested in what the third number is. I mean, I want to. It's like having a T2 over here that I'm estimating the remainder for. So move on to the next one first, uh, try to get something done, and then, uh, then we're going to wrap it up. And then all of the questions that you have, if you get stuck, write them down. So write down why you're stuck and uh, what you need to know to be unstuck. Yeah, well, Any questions over here? Um, now we just yeah. kind of plug it in for M. So what M is is just a bound. We want to know essentially how big the the derivative could be. So how big can cosine be? What's the maximum? One, exactly. So I'm going to pick a word for M. Yeah, I think so. Okay. What? Yeah. So what that M stands for is just a bound, meaning pick the biggest value no, not, yeah, that you have not, for yeah. your derivative. Okay. I think so. And whether you have a cosine or a sine, it's always 1. So M is going to be equal to 1, no matter what. And that's actually a uniform bound in a sense, because it doesn't depend on X. You're always going to have 1. Uh, sorry, 1, uh, no matter if you have cosine or sine. Yeah, like Any questions over here? So, Who is the captain, by the way? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, 
Okay, make sure that you have a uniform solution and then move on. Okay, any questions over here? What are we working on? So it's a maximum of so nothing to you see a trend. Just try to read what we have and see if uh, we get any clues. Uh. <coughs> so where do I read what M is? Okay. So, what does it say over here? And then plus one has to be less than zero. Okay, okay. So it's like the maximum, like like a bound. What we're trying to say is that we want a bound for the n plus first derivative. What's the n plus first derivative in our case? The second derivative, which is? What's the second derivative of what? Of sine. What's the second derivative? Yeah, very good. And now tell me a bound for that function. Tell me a bound for negative sine. Meaning, tell me where I can find sine on the plane. Between? But between negative one and one. Okay, so my m is going to be equal to one. Exactly. So what I'm looking for over there is the best I can do. So no matter what, in terms of x, what I'm actually getting is sine and cosine both are going to be between negative one and one. So what I want to say is that it's never going to be bigger than one. I could say two. I can say two million. But then it would just be a little bit meaningless because I would say the error is less than two million, whatever. That's not so much of an estimate. But if I can get the smallest, I'm still being able to kind of bound everything, then I'm getting a good deal. So that's going to be the biggest, which is a shit one. Yeah, okay, guys, yeah, make sure that you move on after that one. How's it going over here? So what we're doing over here is what? Yeah. We're trying to find a remainder. Um, Blender. Yeah. Let's just what are we doing here? Just to see. Yeah, let's just take the second round. If it goes back to zero, does it? If it does, so, then we have to have a change. Oh, yeah. So we have a series over there that goes to infinity, so but then adding we're in. stopping at the data. Uh, so that's the, that's the approximation, exactly. Because what you told me is that if I take uh, near zero, Sine of theta and theta are pretty much the same thing. So what I'm doing, I'm actually stopping at theta. And then what, what am I missing essentially by stopping at theta and not going in the series expansion? Well, well, it's a little bit more complicated. The error bound is up here. So we want to apply that error bound to what we have in our situation. So essentially, we want to find uh, what the n plus first derivative is, bound there, which is it's going to be a sine and cosine <coughs> all the time. Those are the derivatives. So what's the bound for a cosine and sine? 
1, negative 1. So m, we can just set it up equal to 1. It's never going to be anything different, no matter what we do. So m is going to be equal to 1. And then you see that it all matters what the m plus 1 is, essentially, what the next uh, time in the series is. So what, are we just saying that in the series, in that equation as well, the, the remainder equation? No, the, the problem is that at this end and that end have different meanings. Because this end over here picks up, it's, it's a different thing. So it would be that n is 2j plus 1. So if you write down the series with j instead of n, I think it's, it's actually a little bit better. And so what we do is to say, well, n is the degree of the polynomial. So it would be 2j plus 1. So how do we find n for the remainder um, so, over here, theta is what degree? What's the degree of theta? First, so what's the next one? Second, exactly. So we take uh, power 2 over there. But how, how do you know that if we stop at theta? What's the degree of theta? 1. one. So what's the next term? Oh, oh I see. There you go. Yep. Okay, guys, so try to get a consensus on what's going on here and then move on to the next one. How is it going over here? Are you checking on what from? Feel free to do it actually, because uh, there's a. No, hold on. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't uh, browse the whole. Oh, hold on, I'm just explaining the rules. Don't browse for the whole. Don't ask what from what's the solution of this problem. But if you need to find quickly derivatives, go ahead. Because that's not what we're interested in. That's a good question. So, what, what is that we're doing here? The remainder for. Where are we stopping? So how do we know how to where we're stopping and where could I find that information? The, the issue is that the n up there is not the same as the n down there. They have the different meaning. That's the problem. So we just have to understand what the bound says. So let's look at the box. Okay, I'm looking at the box. Everybody's looking at the box. So the box says uh, I'm taking m, which is just a bound or a derivative, and uh, and then you're just going one step further from where you were. Okay, and the steps is just determined by the degree of the polynomial. So if I say sine of theta is approximately equal to theta, what is the degree of that theta polynomial? Theta approximation. Yeah. So what's uh, the next one? So that's it. Okay. So what we have is an estimate with a 2. So the n upstairs is 2, but it's not necessarily the n downstairs. So that's the issue because uh, what we're trying to say over there is we're picking the odd numbers. So we want a formula that gives us all of the odd numbers. I'm going to write it down because that's it. So, does it make sense uh, what's going on here? But that's it's very important, the two ends don't mean the same thing, so let's just talk about J and that's it. Good. So now N is always the degree of the polynomial. Yeah, what should be said? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so, so to the next problem, what are we doing here? Number five. Yeah. Now move on to the next one. What's the up to x? It's this. It's negative four sine of two x times two x negative eight. Isn't that exactly what they want? And you could also split up in yes. subgroups if you want. So that if you like it, one of the problems better than the other, she focus on that first. Okay, any questions over here?
You don't need to go in order. You can do whatever you like. Okay, it's zero. Yes, indeed. So we don't have any second degree. So the idea is that uh, we don't have any second degree derivative. So the coefficient of x squared would be zero. So you're going with the first term, like a term degree zero first term and the second term. But the zero term and the second term have both coefficient zero. Okay. Let me just write it down. So what I'm saying is have a those that are gonna be equal to zero, yeah I think. So what happens over here if I look at the killer expansion, what that would be? So I've got sine of theta which is what? Taylor expansion, I got a C zero, near zero. I got a C zero plus a C one X plus C two X squared plus C three, and then I've got X to the three plus blah, blah, blah. Now, if we compute all of the derivatives just like you did, what we're getting is that C zero is equal to, it's equal to zero. C two is equal to zero as well. So if I'm in, and then this one is actually giving us a one. So if I'm interested in the second degree polynomial, meaning I'm approximating this and cut all of the rest, what I'm getting is that zero plus. Well, oh, sorry, that's it. Okay. At least we think. I don't know. I might be wrong. So sine of theta is approximately equal to. Yeah, one times theta. So it's theta. So what's the first degree polynomial? Taylor polynomial for sine of theta. You should have gotten one, right? First degree. Theta, exactly, because I'm stopping at the degree. You have to look at the degree of the polynomial, so it's a one. What's the second degree? Second degree? Hey, Oscar. No, Sec no that, sorry. The coefficient of the second degree is zero, and the second degree well, inner polynomial is the whole thing. You go from here, exactly. You go from here, you sum them all up, like all till there. So this is actually the second degree inner polynomial. And the first degree, it doesn't change. If anything, we know that there's a zero for every odd. Yeah. Every odd is zero? Yeah. Every odd is zero. Yeah. Okay, could you try the following? Theta. And then we don't have to worry about this. We have to worry about this part over here. So we have n, which is like a 2 or a 3, doesn't matter. It's just the next one. Uh, is that work for I'm not sure what it will be. Zero, yeah, that works just for Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, you can do that in a trick. Yeah, awesome. There you go, there you go. So make sure now that uh, everybody in your group uh, has it. Oh, sorry. So that was that was g prime of x, g double prime of x is this. What is the second degree Taylor polynomial for sine of theta? Second degree? Taylor polynomial? 
theta, excellent. So it's a theta. So what we're saying here is that sine of theta is equal to theta, but not quite. Okay, it's got a remainder. And then we've got an R2 of theta. And that's going to be near theta equals to zero. So what is it we're doing? We're trying to estimate. So how big is this? Well, we're looking for Lagrange. Uh, we're going to ask uh, help to him. And uh, he says, well, look at the derivatives for the function. So what are the derivatives of sine? And they're just sine and cosine. So essentially, um, we're looking for a bound for the derivative, which is a positive bound? One. One, exactly. So we're never going to have a sine or cosine <coughs> function uh, bigger than 1. So m is our bound for the derivatives. And so that's going to be equal to 1. And uh, so we have our estimate right here. Uh, 1 divided by 3 factorial, and then we've got theta to the power, three. 3, and that's it. And now, if I'm, like, for example, a little bit past 0, so for example, I can see how big the error is when theta is a specific number. So what if uh, theta is actually equal to 0 point, anybody? One. 0 0.1, OK. And so we're going to have the remainder at 0 0.1, and that's going to be less than uh, 0 0.1 cubed uh, divided by 6. So that's how big the error is. And so another kind of thing that we can do is to say, well, if I want to get a bound less than something, how big, what's the biggest theta that I could get? OK, anybody worked uh, on uh, any of the other problems? Oh, the, the thing is that uh, we can look at it uh, from where we started. So the idea is that the um, Taylor polynomial, so we have sine of theta, which is theta minus theta cubed divided by 3 factorial plus theta fifth, uh, 5 factorial minus blah, blah, blah. And uh, the point is that we are stopping at theta. So that's the kind of approximation that we're getting. What we're saying it's approximately equal to theta because we just decided to take that as an approximation. The problem tells us. So here's what we are doing. Instead of sine of theta, we're replacing it with uh, theta. And so technically, we're stopping at degree. What's the degree of this? What's the degree of this polynomial? One. one. OK, we're stopping at degree one. And the issue is that if I stopped over there and take just the power two, then, uh, well, I would get a theta to the power 2 over here. Um, but I can actually do better and uh, take a power 3. So I'm actually reducing the error because I, this is also the degree 1 polynomial. It's also the degree 2 polynomial because uh, sine of theta skips all of the even powers. And so there's no difference between degree 1 and degree 2 poly Taylor polynomials. So these are Taylor polynomials. So it's a problem that tells us essentially where to stop. Or it's just us, OK? Because we just need to set up a, a level of happiness. When we do our experiments, we have some data, and we have some errors. And uh, we can say, well, I don't want to, I want to have a, as precise an error as possible, or as precise an estimate as possible. And so I could decide to go up a couple of powers in order to shrink the error. OK, any other questions? Yep. So can we just, if it's not specified, can we just pick a uh, number yes, or a degree yes. to, to Yeah, we, we can pick. Sometimes it's actually, it says um, what to do. For example, let's look together <coughs> at uh, the problem of uh, approximating pi using the uh, Taylor polynomials. So how many Taylor polynomials can we do? Well, we've got our tangent of x. And we're looking for a Taylor approximation of our tangent. And then we're going to use that to estimate the numerical value of pi. Why would that be useful? I mean, how can that help us? Why our tangent? <coughs> hmm? Oh, our tangent is 
is actually very bounded, yes, sir? But what's the reason, what's the, sorry? Tangent. tangent is not, so that wouldn't be maybe a good idea. But what's the relationship between our tangent and pi? Why are they, <coughs> why is it going to be a good idea to use our tangent? Because that's the limit, like that's the highest it goes, right? What's as high as it goes? It doesn't go above pi. As you it go, doesn't go above what, actually? Pi over 2. Pi over 2, yeah. But that would be like a limit at infinity. So we're not actually really getting pi or pi over 2. So that would be at infinity. Yeah? Is like the range equal to pi? Sorry? The range? The range is equal to pi. What else is equal to pi? Is your, well, what's our tangent? How do we define our tangent? Say our tangent of x equals to, let's say, theta. What does it mean? So the, in, the angle, so the tangent to that angle theta is going to be equal to x. So that's the definition of our tangent. And is there any relationship, anything that plugged into our tangent is going to give us pi or some sort of pi related anything? Let's talk to your neighbor. and try to find a relationship between our tangent <coughs> and pi. So we can only check values between negative power two and pi over two. So if you have any value, then we can uh, get a pi over. But not necessarily pi. Like pi over two, pi over four, pi over 
six you get a multiple that's on you. <coughs> so anything that gives us pi or any multiple of pi. So you guys are we yeah. So as we work from what are we like doing? We made a Taylor expansion of arc tangent with x near zero. Would that give us an estimate? Oh, but how are we going to use? Oh, a derivative of arc tangent. So, we so if that's okay. Zero, one over uh, one plus x squared. Okay. Okay. So, how are you thinking about making arc tangent? That was a derivative. No, no, that's the arc tangent. But why is that useful? Why am I just sitting on arc tangent? Yeah. Why? I mean, afterwards, uh, I, I'm getting that you are talking about the Taylor expansion of arc tangent, and that's awesome. But what am I going to do with that? So it's one over one. Yeah, that's good. So let's have a plan. So we're leaving the calculations to work from. Okay. Well, what we have, can we make it? Like, with the, with the formula that we have? Like, can we have some of this? I wish I could find uh, some relationship between tangent oh, and tangent rather and pi. Is there any value that we can plug in that's going to give us a pi or a multiple of pi? Or a fraction of pi? Or a tangent of 0, 0, and that would give us pi. I would say tangent related to a sign thing. No, I just don't know. Our tangent of 0, 0, but okay, that, that would be involving with the whole that's a little bit tricky. Anytime you're talking about infinity, but Whatever is there anything kind of cool because uh, oh, okay. we're going to wrap it up on Tuesday. Okay, yeah. okay. The thing but is that when you have the remember Taylor expansions are always local. So if I'm going to use a Taylor expansion, then it's going to be like local and zero. And then what happens is that at infinity, it might be just too far away. So that's the issue. What can we get at most? Is there anything that gives us pi, pi over 2, pi over 4, pi over 6? Correct, but the idea is that is there any value of R that you can put in the X? Is there any X that you say R tangent of that is equal to a multiple of I? That's the issue. Because then we can do a Taylor expansion and see what happens. Uh, oh, I forgot. Sorry about that. Well, that's free. No, 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 you don't have to worry. It's free for everybody. Hey, I feel so no, 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 it's free for everybody. Okay, okay. I should get a 93 point something. Yes, 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 and that's I got, correct. I got 30 taken off when I should, should get, get 80. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. So I got a 75, and then I got the bonus too, so I don't... Oscar! <laughs> yeah, so we're going to just check it out uh, with, the, with the spreadsheet and uh, how we can get it. Oscar, mm -hmm. do you um, still have those quizzes? Do you want us to leave them with you? Because I think there was a... I, I don't know if this got re... I, I give them yesterday. I think I might have them here. Two more years. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, these are the pieces to grade. But okay. 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 Yeah, it just looks like good. Something got okay. messed up I with that, but no problem. Okay, should be one of these at the end. Did you want <coughs> these, these long quizzes? Did you want them both to create them or just one to create them? Sorry, say it again. These long quizzes? Yeah, the one from should, yesterday. Yeah. Should they sh should they help each other grade them or should we just? Yeah, 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 yeah. They can help each other because that's uh, they're long. It's a longer they could be long, yeah. yeah. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure, but <laughs> if you want to just split it up, and it's fairly straightforward. There's no guessing. I mean, okay. right. it shouldn't okay. be a problem. Okay.
I don't have a solution to it, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back to this. So, are, uh, I'm just asking, oh, making okay. sure that he's aware of them. So, these three? These three, these are extra. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't. Okay. Yeah, you're a great one. Alright. Alright, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'll Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> just take yeah. give me the biggest one. Second one. Just 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 Okay. 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 Oh, I just didn't know anything. Um, did, did Reggie and... Reggie just left, yeah. I, don't I, I think, I think uh, Michael created this one. I'm not sure how he did it. Oh, yeah, so but, we can check but, 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 but I mean, when... Mm, yeah, I mean... 3 out of 15, it should be an 80. She got a 75. Okay, yeah. I, I, I didn't grade this, but I guess we'll ask... But yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, r roughly, the roughly, same. this should be worth. Um, so, roughly, this one should be worth nine points, right? And this should be worth like, yeah. Because I mean, Any it's, you guys it's eleven oh. points. I just have one quick question. It's, it's I don't eleven points total, so it should be roughly worth nine points. Oh no, no, but it's important. So it's one point each. Yeah, I was going so to, and I didn't have to do it, and I had all the work here. Yeah. Good. But on the second part, I was under the impression when it says a particular solution Correct. Okay. that it was actually looking for so some number and that no solution oh, wasn't no. an option. A solution, a solution is always like an x equals so to whatever. Each one of these five points. Right. And so what oh. we're looking for is just a Wait, saying, oh. well, yeah. either being aware yeah. of that. So here it looks like it's not. <laughs> Oh, I guess like for me, I, <coughs> I was under the impression that it was going towards some okay. number, so and so I went through the word, so and it, so said the that it would be no solutions. But, yeah. but the thing is that a solution yeah. 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 is not a number; eight. it's just if they're not equal to only worth something. One point each, then so for it example, twelve out of fifteen that I got right, and it should be an eighty, not a seventy-five. Divided by two. That could be. And then he gave me plus five points for the bonus. A solution of a differential equation is a function. So I didn't understand how. So that's what we're looking for. I mean, not a number. These, but wasn't these points yeah, here, it's no just solution because it didn't. We usually do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Way. So we exactly. have to distribute all the But the thing is that uh, once you, you're here, you're doing exactly so everything see. correct. So these are let's all of the so. solutions as mm -hmm. perfect. That's what like, And now, I know, that's let's see, we have a different like, it's still uh, not bad finish condition. It's an 80 out of 100. What we would do is to take those numbers, plug them in, and then you did that. And then we would find A equals to something. Let's say, for example, and this. We say a equals to <coughs> okay, well the thing is, whatever. I'm sure she created and, and all these. I mean, we plug it in. I didn't choose x of the t points. It's, a, it's just it's 15. every time. So every time it's not 100, so we have t to like, times 15. We have to choose how much each one is worth. Okay. And that will be the solution. And, um, so over here, what I was expecting was something like. I'm pretty sure he created um, all of these the same. Either. <laughs> yeah, so no solution. Well, over yours, here, you can change every other one. You can the whole thing. So it's just to say he has no solutions. So and he, he actually was a little bit trickier 11, than that either because yeah, so, so, so uh, this one doesn't I'm guessing have any he graded solutions. each one of these five sure. points. But from here, I mean the points. point I guess is, he graded each one of are those really points, all solutions? This 50 points and this a bonus Because we separated five, the variables. And by separating mm -hmm. the variables, 
we get these so two extra, the extra that we need to check. I, I wasn't even sure because we are right. potentially so divided by zero. That, so that's what so we want to have the same thing to zero. So we were just both one. wondering. Yeah. yeah so, so the thing is, and yeah. And so essentially, what we want to be aware of that is is this issue. But he was fair to everybody. And when we are dividing, you could be potentially divided by zero. Oh, okay. And that means you're losing solutions. Yeah, but I'm not too sure. I, I'll so have to talk to Michael. Okay, I just have a question. Yeah. So, okay. so, okay. and then what would be the right answer X to what we're solving? Oh, oh. X cannot be equal to this for this to work. Five, and then we have okay. to consider so that separately. Okay. So it's like, uh, for example, we're going to set X equals 7. Mm -hmm. Algebraic equation X so minus 3 times X minus 1 seven, equals five, to five, X minus 1. We get a 4 <coughs> So if I solve this, this is an equation, just a algebra. So if I just say. Two. Simplify, then Put I get x five. minus 3 equals to 0, two which means that x is equal to 3. It should right. also converge. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the problem is that we've lost because a solution. Because, because if x is, is equal to when 1, when you plug in 7 here, mm -hmm. you get 4n, right? One so you get c solution. times 4 to the power n converges. Mm -hmm. Which means this and is the n. We can, so if x is equal to 1, you get 0 equals to 0. It's like with like Now, if you plug in a 5, you only get 2n. Sort of. Exactly. So if this c indicates that we want to be aware of that when we're dividing, we're potentially losing something. And so here, I'm dividing. This is an algebraic equation. I'm dividing by 0. I can't do that. So if you just say this, then what happens is that you're losing Are you going to Olivia or are you going to talk to him? Get free today, but okay. maybe some other time. Will you have office hours before finals? Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. We should have a review Here. session again. I was really oh, upset that we didn't have one. I don't think I'll be able to, but I... Uh, no problem. Mm. In the LA? I can do it, like, on the... Like, on the third Sometimes I have to yeah. it, it, it would be, like, ten days before the... It, it, would, it would be, like, ten days before the final. Okay. Cool. I can't, I can't do it from the, from yeah, the fourth yeah, to the thirteenth. I can do it. Yeah, and it's not enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. we're, like we're looking for some. It's not good. Have a good day. And mm -hmm. if it's not solution, you want to say not solution. That's right. Yeah, because like the only thing I was looking for was um, because I thought it would end up being something would be able to solve for a. Be like, oh, yeah, yeah, correct. E to then then the a we're gonna plug it back in here. That's all we're gonna do with the with the a. Yeah, just like here. I guess like I just I didn't write no solutions in the end yeah. because it's impossible for <coughs> this to ever equal zero. Oh yeah yeah yeah, but that, that's what we need to see. So all that I see here is this, and I cannot distinguish between. Uh, you knew what was going on. Uh, do I have to? I mean, it's got impossible solutions, or I did not have time to finish. So if I just see this, there's no way for me to tell those two apart. Right. I guess like. And so I cannot, I cannot say, well, but she knew what she was doing. I cannot guess. That's the thing. Right. Okay, I understand. And I, I mean, I removed the one point for everybody who did that. Okay, I understand. I guess, like, I just wanted to try asking. Oh, yeah, I no, no problem. Just making sure that we understand what's going on. Definitely. Right. I guess, like, I was under the impression with this that it was going yeah. to, we would be able to solve for A. Yeah. I thought I had made a mistake before when I realized no, I couldn't solve No, and anyway, it. if you have a mistake and then you get no solution as a conclusion, then you, you might get points off for the mistake, but then if the conclusion is consistent, you don't get more points off. Right. So that's I just felt like no solution wasn't an option during the exam, which is why I like... It's always, I get, just over here, what's the conclusion from here? Okay. That's, that's all. Okay. Well, I thought I, I might as well just try to Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank no you problem. very much. Sure. That helps with a lot of other things as well. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, great. Awesome. Well, thank you. And, okay, um, you can keep it. Okay. So then the score and everything is settled before. Like, no points are changing, so, okay. There's one